Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast, episode five, and just me in the studio today, and just got a quick, quick thing to share with you and talk to you about that I don't think enough people, um, you know, give value to. All right, um, <laughs> the word you're going to hear a lot here on the podcast, and and when we're bringing guests in and we're doing interviews and talking to them about. The vast majority of these people are all entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs to some extent. And the word entrepreneur, to me, it's funny. It's someone who who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. I saw that a couple of years ago, and I was like, holy crap. Like, yeah, legit. That's every entrepreneur that I know. Someone who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. And that resonated with me in, in such a way. And so I kind of wanted to just share with you a little bit about that um, today. Maybe you are an entrepreneur out there who's listening. Maybe you are um, a, a entrepreneur. You're, you're, you're in your, your full-time job, in your career, uh, but you've got this, this burning inside of you to, to do something different. You have an idea. You have something that you want to try. Um, you went to college and got your degrees and, and, and learned all these things and you just feel unfulfilled on this path that you've taken. Um, and a lot of the times people in those scenarios, they're brilliant, super educated, great career, but they're very unhappy. And the funny thing is when they think about it, they have a gift that they're not using a gift that if they were using would find them living a very, very, very different life. But the thing that keeps them, from moving forward with that are the cliffs because the cliffs are scary, right? I mean, they're, they're terrifying. Um, everybody, not everybody, most people want to go close to the edge, maybe where the safe barrier is built and look and, and get the view. But rarely are there those people that want to actually get all the way to the edge and look down. Everybody likes to look at the horizon see how far the expansiveness of, of what can be seen. But rarely do people want to get to the edge and look down. Even fewer people are willing to get to the edge, look down, look forward, and would consider jumping. That's crazy, right? And, and we're all one of those three people. And the ones that are willing to jump jump being that risk, jump being the the chance at living a different life, jumping being um, the chance to pursue a passion, jumping being the um, giving up of safety nets and the paycheck every two weeks and the norm and the support of family and friends um, and then thinking that you're crazy and, and why would you do that? Why would you leave that that good job with the city? Why would you do those things? Because you want to start your own restaurant because you've got this idea for this device that, you know, could help change how, you know, third world, very, really poor countries, you'll receive water because you've got an idea for an apparel line. Cause you've got an idea for, for anything at all. People don't understand those things. It's a small, small percentage of people that understand those things. And so people go to the cliff and they stay in the area where they can enjoy the view and see all the birds soaring and see maybe people across the way, maybe see the people on the helicopter tour doing their deal and they're comfortable there and they stay there because where are the majority of people? The majority of the people are all there in the same spot, enjoying their little time, taking their little looks and just enjoying the view. The jump though is where the special stuff really happens. When you take that risk, when you take that step, when you pursue that dream, when you unlock that gift that only you have that's unique to you that nobody else has, and you go all in on that gift, the possibilities just become, become limitless. But we're all scared to jump. So when I saw that, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, a person who jumps off the cliff and builds the plane on the way down, because you can't have it all figured out, guys. If you have this dream, if you have this desire, if you have this thought, 
if you wait until you have it all figured out to take any sort of action, while it may be your gift, someone with a lesser gift may have the idea and they're going to be light years ahead of you because they took the chance. They jumped. You've got to take that next step. You have to make that transition. You can't sit back and let all the people tell you why it's a bad idea, um, you know, why you shouldn't do that, you know, talk you out of it because it's not their gift. It's not their dream. It's not their vision. You got to jump. And the thing is, it's going to be okay when you do. I say it's going to be okay. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that it's going to not be without challenges and course corrections and injuries um, and trauma. But it's going to be okay. Because I'm just, I, I find it very difficult to believe that when someone gets uh, their mind in alignment with their giftings and also in alignment with their passions, that failure is even an option that the tools that you need are going to be presented to you when you start making decisions based on your gifts, based on your passions. All right. Based on having your, your mindset in alignment with those things, the opportunities magically present themselves. Well, why didn't this happen 20 years ago? Well, 20 years ago, you weren't willing to take the, the jump. Because all the things you need to accomplish what your real dreams are, what your real goals are, are on the other side of that ledge. So there has to be risk. There has to be the, the ability to take that initial step that is terrifying because you don't know. Society, the norm is, you know, you have a job, you clock in, you clock out. You get paid every couple of weeks. They're going to throw a couple coins into retirement for you. Maybe they're going to throw some coins towards some health insurance and things like that. It is safe. It is secure. It's, it's great apparently because that's what the majority of the world does. All right. But you know what else is, I guess, supposedly safe and secure. And to me has an equal type of return. Um, as that type of life does, you know, when I think about it, a savings account. You don't got to worry about losing your money. You know, it's, it's there. But what kind of return are you getting on that money sitting in that savings account? We all know the deal. I mean, the banks are making a killing, but, you know, they're throwing you a couple, couple pennies here and there, a couple nickels, a couple dollars, depending on how much you're saving up. But it's nothing great, right? But you're also not putting any risk into it. You're just letting the bank use it. So you're being rewarded based on the risk you're willing to take. It's the same thing with your gifts. It's the same thing with your dreams. You're going to re get the return out of it based on what you put into it. And this isn't a, a I'm going to get rich, I'm going to do this. It has nothing to do with that. It's about fulfillment. It's about your life. It's about what you want your life to be about. And if you're not willing to jump and start figuring it out along the way, all the things that you need, you'll never know are there. Because like I said, everything you need is on the other side of the cliff. You've got to jump. It's terrifying, guys. And the world's not going to tell you that these tools are there for you. The world's not going to tell you that these resources and these incredible human beings, all of a sudden you're surrounding yourself with different people. You're like, huh, they're off a little bit. <laughs> they're crazy. They're really supportive. They have so much insight. They've got so much knowledge. Wow, they've built an incredible business. Wow, I didn't even know that could be a career path. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. Hold on, you travel that much? You've got that thing? Your family does, does this together? You started this nonprofit? All of a sudden, there's all these things. There's this whole world that the world doesn't talk about. And you're wondering, how did I get myself in these circles? I think about it every day. There's groups of people I've been spending time with the last year, year and a half. 
my Apex family. I never knew these people were out there. Never knew. Never knew. I mean, there are legit killers in this group, savages, just I, the most incredible business minds doing crazy huge things, impacting the world in ways like it's just unbelievable. And then they're the kindest damn people you'd ever meet in your life who just want to help and be a resource to you. Never would have known they were there. I had not taken that step, that next step, and jumped. All these like-minded people, you're like, oh, they're not approachable. They're not this. They're not that. They're on a whole other level. They're dealing with the same stuff you are. They dealt with the same thought process where you are. If you're thinking about taking that first step and chasing after your dream, using your gift to create the life that you want, every one of these people... And so many more, they remember that part because they were there. And it's instrumental to getting where you want to be. But the common denominator between everybody is they jumped. They jumped, and on the way down, they built a plane that's going to take them to the life that they want. That's it. But they didn't have the resources either. Nobody I know. That's killing it in life. And you define killing it however you want it to be. But particularly within business, financially, who are doing great, making an impact on their communities and, and giving back big and all those things. I don't know a single one of them that it was handed to them. Every one of them has incredible stories. Every one of them has a tons of trials and failures and wins. Um, and they got the crap beat out of them getting to where they're at now. The thing is, though, when you're building that plane on the way down, you need the plane to get you through all these issues, all right? And you got to have the mindset to be able to survive all these issues and setbacks and the failures. And you keep plugging, and you keep plugging, and you keep plugging. How did they do that? People surrounding themselves with the right people, getting the resources around them. It is hard, like I said. It is challenging. And you're going to want to stop. Because it's the exact opposite of everything you are accustomed to and used to. There's nothing safe feeling about it. There's nothing okay about it when you're going through it. You're going to tell yourself every damn day, that was a terrible decision. I got to try to get my old job back. I'm about to lose it all. My family, they were right. I'm nuts. No, Nobody understands this. But you got to listen to that other, other voice in your head, that your gift screaming at you, use me, believe in me, implement me, run with it, invest in me, invest your time, invest your energy, because more than likely you're going to be dead broke, so you don't have any money to invest in the gift. All right? It's not about that. Put your energy, put your focus, the resources you do have into that gift, and ride it. Ride that thing out. Put in the work, put in the effort. Because the thing is, you're going to put in the effort either way. You're going to have good days and bad days either way. Sitting at the job that you hate, doing a job that you don't enjoy, refusing to make use of, of your God-given gifts and talents, you're going to have good or bad days anyway. So why not have good and bad days regardless, but be focusing on using your gift and building something special, unique to you, that's going to provide a better life for you and your family. And maybe it's time, not money. Maybe it's money and not time. Maybe it's just opportunity. Maybe better yet, it just has everything to do with your, your, your mentality. And you have a happier life. You have control of your time or the feeling of control of your time. That's what I like to say. I feel like I have control of my time. I let myself believe I control my time. But you got to make use of that gift. It's going to be hard either way. You're going to have setbacks either way. You're going to fail sometimes either way. Jump anyway. Jump. Jump. I promise you all the resources you need 
to win and grow and make use of your gifts are on the other side of that barrier that your kid's keeping you back. You might not be able to drive through it. You might not be able to push it over, but you can climb over it and jump. Build the plane on the way down. You'll figure it out. There are so many people there who want to help you. There's so many resources for you. All right? Hit me up. Instagram. You can email us. All that stuff's in there. We appreciate you so much. Um, you know, we, <laughs> this is episode five. You know, I feel like it's like episode 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Uh, we got so many things going on and so many great people lined up that are been coming in. Um, I'm just excited and I appreciate you sticking with us on this ride. Would really appreciate leave a review, leave some feedback, helps us to get found. If you haven't already, subscribe, um, whatever platform it is that you're following us on. We appreciate you and we're going to see you next Thursday on the Big Dog Podcast. Thank you.